The wait is over. 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 Hello and welcome to Power Drift and welcome to Thailand. I'm a long way away from home, but I have with me two motorcycles that will be available in our country in about two weeks from now. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Yamaha R3 and the MTO3. So what's really happening here? Well, the R3 couldn't meet emission norms back in 2020 and got discontinued. But because everything is sorted today, the R3 is coming back and along with it, the MTO3 as well. In a sense, the MTO3 is a no-fairing version of the R3. Less weight, less expensive and different ergos. More on that later, but let's kick things off with this fully fed Yamaha. Truth be told, I'm a sucker for fully fed motorcycles. They look proper sporty, they make you feel like a rock star, are usually great around corners and overall very appealing. For this version, there are two things that you need to know. LED lamps all over and a USB fork up front. I'm going to talk about the ride experience in just a bit, but for now, what a good looking motorcycle. Elsewhere, it's still pretty basic. No JATAC display, no Bluetooth, no navigation, no electronic aids except ABS and no adjustable levers as well. But the thing that I'm excited about the most is this engine. Forty-two horses, twenty-nine newton meters of torque, and finally compliant with the emission norms in India. In terms of feeling, it reminds me of how the old-school Japanese inline-four motorcycles were. No character at the bottom, absolutely nothing, but very lively at the top. The R3 likes to be revved out, and trust me, you will enjoy this experience. But because of this character, you need to shift down a gear, sometimes even two, to actually overtake. And I'm sure the BS4 R3 owners can relate to this. There is a slight buzz around the handlebars, 6 gear, 120 km per hour, but overall the refinement levels are really nice. The clutch is light, the throttle response is... And the gearbox is smooth as butter, but I wish it had a quick shifter. I really wish it did because that is something that I'm missing right now. Last couple of things. One, what a sweet sounding motorcycle, especially the way everything comes to life after six and a half, seven thousand RPM. I really, really like it. And two, in order to sum up how this engine feels, I would like to say that it's like an arranged marriage from the 60s or the 70s. From nothing, to something, to everything. The suspension is well set. It's almost perfect for your everyday ride. So very well damped. It's not all out firm like a sports bike, so when you go around a bumpy corner, you will feel a little nervous, but smooth roads, straight or otherwise, the R3 is very well tuned. I'm not so happy with the tyres because exit a corner slightly hard and the rear starts to step out. And this is after a good warm-up session. So a change in that department is something you might have to consider. I would love to ride this at a racetrack and understand this stock setup better, but for a bike that is standing in your garage and not at a race pit, it is fantastic. I firmly believe the R3 is a very versatile motorcycle. 
something that can be used in the city on a Friday. You can take it out touring on a Saturday and set lap times at your favorite racetrack on a Sunday. It's a good mix of everything and I absolutely love it. And I say this because it's not 100% super sport nor is it too commuterish. Um, how do I say it? It's, it's like a pack of medium fries, something that sits in the middle but fills you up just right. Incredible chassis. It's almost like it's reading your mind. So easy, so manageable, just like a wow. A lot of factors contribute to this feeling. It's lightweight, feels small and the weight distribution is perfect. It turns like a sports bike should and I loved every second of this ride. Like I mentioned earlier, the tires are a problem but apart from that, lovely. When the light's so and when you want to take things easy, the R3 becomes a tourer. In spite of clip-ons, the rider's triangle should be comfortable for most of you guys. For me, I had to stretch it out after every 90-100 odd kilometers because the pegs are high and rear set and it did feel a little cramped. On the flip side, the seat is like your couch and that should help you cover long distances very easily. And not just that, the seat height too, accessible for almost every rider. Okay, let's talk about the MTO3. Two kilos lighter, slightly different ergos because of a different handlebar, different looks of course. It's also got muscular shrouds around the tank that's not there in the R3. The tuning of the front fork is also slightly different because there is no fairing weight up front. But otherwise, the rest of the resume is absolutely identical. No changes whatsoever. And why should Yamaha change it? It's based on the same platform, it's a naked derivative of the R3, so it makes sense. But this 321cc motor feels like it's in the wrong body here. It's a high revving motor, so for you to really enjoy the experience, you really need to be on gas. And considering the fact that this is a street fighter, I don't know how many times are you going to find yourself doing that, especially in the city? With the R3, you might find yourself on a tour, might head to a racetrack someday. But I don't think that's going to happen with the MT, no? The absence of a strong bottom end is a bit of a problem here. And while you might enjoy everything else about this motorcycle, the refinement, the right quality, the suspension, everything else, you will always feel that the engine in the MT's body is a misfit. This was my first time on an R3 and before this, I'd only heard and read good things about it. And today, after having ridden almost 800 kilometers across the country of Thailand, I'm happy to say that every bit is true. It's a fantastic motorcycle and it's probably the only motorcycle that you will ever need. But I'm sure you've heard of this term, CBU, completely built unit. The R3 will make its way to India via the CBU route and hopefully it will become CKD later in the future. And that means it will be expensive. I'm expecting the price to be between 4 to 4.5 lakh rupees for the R3. The MTO3 will be slightly cheaper, roughly by about 20 to 25,000 rupees. So, is it worth it? When you look at how simple the R3 is, maybe not. Because at the end of the day, it's still two wheels and an engine, it's, and it's literally just that. But when you look at feelings on a motorcycle, it is one of the best motorcycles that I have ever ridden. But that's pretty much it. My experience in Thailand has come to an end. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions, please drop them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. 
Thank you once again. My name is Varun Painter and I will see you later.